I don't know, man. The Sopran- There's so much to talk about when it comes to The Sopranos. That's the thing to- that, um, like, I, I kind of wanted to, you know, narrow it down, especially with, like, my, my YouTube video of just, like, I want to talk about a very specific thing just because, like, this is such a big show and there are so many themes. Like, there's the theme of just, like, immigration, uh, of just, like, not, uh, not necessarily immigration, but it's just, like, this ethnic group that has been in America for a while but still isn't fully American, you know? But it's it's interesting how Tony uses that because it's kind of bullshit. It's kind of bullshit. Like he, he knows what he's doing. He uses he uses it as kind of like yes, we're oppressed. It's like not nah, really. But you man. see this in David Chase's real life because David Chase his last name is not Chase. It's um right. it's something super Italian, mm-hmm. and his dad had it changed to Chase because he did not pe- want people knowing. He was Italian. Dude, no, no, no. Don't get me yeah. wrong. That's certainly a real thing, especially, I mean, within our own family. Like, our grandfather's um, family, you know, faced discrimination yeah, with yeah. housing because they were they, Puerto Rican. For being Puerto Rican, and, exactly. And, you know, like, there's there's a lot of truth to that. And, and um, I'm not downplaying that, uh, um, that the Italian people, you know, face that uh, what i'm saying is like tony's a bad guy and he know but he knows what he's doing yeah and he uses that as kind of like we're soldiers we gotta you know there christopher columbus a, and it's like is yeah, a lot bro, of but you're fucking you're a fucking murderer there dude. is a lot of bullshit with tony soprano and this just goes to uh, um James Gandolfini's performance where like every time Tony kind of gets into one of these tyrants of just like, well, you know, when the Italians came here, you know, the rich, they wanted us as our worker bees and we weren't going to handle it. And, you know, all these Americans, they were murderers, too. But everybody looks down at us because we we're in the mafia or like when he's talking about like we're soldiers and or he's whatever. Not wrong. <laughs> it, I, no, he's not wrong. But and it goes to how good of an actor James Gandolfini is. Exactly. Is like you can tell he wants you to believe this but he doesn't believe it well at all. he has this great thing that he does and this was also in the um i don't know how much we've talked about it on this podcast i know you did on on your your um your breakdown video but we're looking at two episodes here there's the uh one from the second season what's it called uh from where to eternity and the last um episode of the series yeah and how they kind of um it, intertwine yes thematically but in that episode from season two from here to eternity it's another example almost like the uh, italians are you know being persecuted thing where tony does this thing which is brilliant and and gandolfini like does it so well um whenever he knows he's basically wrong he just kind of goes on the offense Right. You know, right, like when, right. when Carmela is saying, talking to him about like, hey, you're putting our family at risk by like fucking around with all these different women. Um, and, you know, like if there was a, a, she calls it a bastard child to happen, it would be such a disgrace on our family's name. And he, instead of like, I mean, she's got him fucking nailed, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. what can you possibly say to that? You know, and he know, and he's been caught. He knows that he yeah. that's what he does. But he goes on the offense. He's like, "I told you, I, I told you, I broke things off with her. What's wrong with you?" Like he's, and he goes like, "I had her tested for AIDS." <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like I'm this great guy. Like, what the hell is your problem? You're you're giving me a hard time about like these other girls that I'm fucking. Yeah. Like. He also he says at the end of the episode when Carmela and him are talking. And he he has this very heartfelt of just like I promise I'm not going to to screw around anymore. Which is and it, and it's interesting watching that scene because he seems like he means it so much, and we know that he doesn't because we've watched the rest of the show. Yeah, see, and I, we know he like still is gonna fuck around. Yeah. but that's all. That's who Tony Soprano is. But he's a sociopath. I yes, mean, he 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 genuinely. I mean, it's like when he uh, there's another episode where he basically convinced he like. He basically convinces Christopher that, like, this guy is the guy who killed your father. You know, the Uh, the cop. And he's like, and and it turns out to maybe that wasn't the case. Uh, Yeah. My my point is he has no problem making an argument with a a straight fucking face, which is a complete 
lie or majority a lie, yeah. but he'll do it anyway because it gets him to what what he needs to do. So like right. when when he's when, in that scene that you're referring to where he's like telling Carmela he's never going to cheat again essentially like I didn't even like he's just such a sociopath that he doesn't mind like saying an an outright yeah lie yeah. like you know um it's like it's so interesting it's like acting within acting almost right right you know like he he's Gandolfini's brilliant cuz he's acting as a guy who's acting, acting. like right. yeah Gandolfini was I'll I'll say I'll say this because you know it doesn't really relate to many scenes in Newark but I had heard a lot of stories from like people who were on the crew who used to work it's on a lot the of the same crew you it's a lot of the same crew say that uh, so, uh, I, yeah I, I can say that it's a lot of the same crew and uh they so they were sick. talking about um the, there was a bar that they um all went to after shoots the, the entire crew and that it w- it was like near where they were filming so like throughout like, the series they would uh like throughout a, the series well i'm not i'm actually not sure if this was, was on the sopranos or if it was on the uh the other movie gangster movie gandolfini did that took place in new orleans with oh, killing them killing them softly it might it have been on killing them softly that there was a bar they always went to and like gandolfini would walk in he would get like three bottles of wine just to go and then leave his card on the table and be like anyone on the crew just charge them to my card that's sick yeah, yeah that i mean that is sick i don't know because uh well new jersey has to go bottles you can do that but so does new orleans so i'm not sure also that killing them softly movie is fucking terrible yeah i don't know um, if you've seen it but it is garbage it's a couple of quick like um references or quick connections is uh well, Gandalf, as we've mentioned before, our family uh, has run and operated a bar in New York since the early 1900s yes. called Peter McManus Cafe. Where every and, day is St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. And that's where the, and that's where the mobsters go. When, <laughs> Tony, when Christopher's describing hell, he, he's, he's, he's literally he's, describing Peter McManus. Like, it's <laughs> literally, and, but, um, and like, and a bunch of the Irish guys, they're always winning the hands. And I was like, yeah, that would be me and Mike. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Gandolfini was a uh i don't know that we'd call him, well at one time he was a regular there before our yes, time yes you know, that is like true the this was before the sopranos yes yeah and he actually dated one of our friends who is a yeah. longtime employee of theirs uh of that of peter mcmanus cafe but um i forget what my other point was oh one of the other bartenders there who's now been there uh over 10 years been there for a while i used to work with him my buddy joe he was in a rap group back in the day with uh, Slain, the rapper Slain. I don't know who Slain he, he, is. He's, a big, he's pretty big from Boston. But anyway, oh, okay. he's in that movie Killing Him Softly as well. Oh, all right. Mm-hmm. Um, so just uh, it's, it's interesting when the worlds kind of collide. Like you yeah. keep doing shit for a while and, and, and you, you meet some interesting people, you know. Like how cool is it for you? And I know you can't really talk about it, but like for me, being your older brother, like – I don't want to say I'm more proud. I'm I'm not more proud of you for that because I'm proud of you regardless. But the point is that that's pretty fucking cool that it's a show. I remember when you first got it, just being like, "It's insane because uh, this is a show that uh, yeah, you fucking it, grew up with, and it, now you're working." It on. was a movie I was really hoping to get hired on because just the history of myself with The Sopranos of like. When it was on TV, this was a show that I kind of had to sneak to watch yes. because I was super young. So I I would have to... The, the first time I like saw it in full was when they recut it for A&E. And, um, and it's just... It's not the same show. And I remember I watched it on A&E and I like didn't like it. And it wasn't until... Well, it just, like, seemed, like, totally different. Like, I remember when I was a little kid trying to sneak in to watch The Sopranos, and it was just, like, this super violent show. Everyone was saying, everyone was cursing every five seconds. They were boobies. And then when I watched it on a and they were, yeah, all right, fine. I haven't heard of that word in a long time. Well, I'm I'm saying it as if like sure when, from uh, the I point of yeah, view yeah, yeah. of me as a gotcha. six year old trying yeah. to watch The Sopranos. Gotcha. Of like that's the word I would use. Yes. Um. 
And then watching it like recut on A&E, I was like probably a freshman in high school and it just like didn't seem like the same show at all. And then, you know, obviously I was watching it on, uh, you know, the HBO Go and everything like throughout college. And I've probably seen the entire like all six seasons, maybe like three or four times. Yeah. Um, And then particular episodes I've seen, like, I don't know, the first episode I've probably seen like 10 times, you know. Uh, from here say, to eternity is one of my favorite ep- all-time what, episodes. That was, that's a mind. From where to eternity episode. is one of my favorite all-time episodes. So much just happens in that episode. I know. I yeah. couldn't believe it. Like I'm like, holy shit! This is because I know a lot of times with the series for me anyway. Like I know all these moments, but you don't necessarily remember like where yeah. they are. Yeah. Um. It well, it's interesting. And there's so much that ha- there's so yes. many classic Sopranos moments that happen in yes. that episode. And it's interesting that that's that episode kind of ends with a murder, with Phil. with Matthew Bevilacqua. Bella, Bella, oh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm on the last episode. Yes. Matthew Bevilacqua. It kind of ends with a murder, and it's interesting we that could do a whole podcast just on that guy. Just on. <laughs> anyway, go. Uh, well, it's interesting that just this. Um, Not Bevilacqua, the actor. Who the plays actor, him. and he sucks. He's good at, as Matthew Be- Bevilacqua. As Matthew Bevilacqua, he's, horrible he's in the Bronx good. Tale. In the Bronx Tale is one of the worst movie. It's is one of the movie. worst gangster movies of all time. <laughs> it's such a bad. Um, movie. No, actually, the beginning's great. Though. The beginning's great. That when really he's a is. little kid, it's great. That's like a third of the movie. The next two thirds is oh. him as a, a as a high school senior, and the the kid is a terrible actor. And I I blame this as Robert De Niro, who is one of my favorite actors of all time, but he is a terrible director. He also has been putting up a lot of garbage. On He's the board. also been putting up. A, He's I been don't throwing up ha, stinkers. Have you for seen a good the trailer for years. for Robert De Niro's ne- uh, newest movie? No, what is it? It's a horny called, grandpa or some shit. It's it's like fight with grandpa or something. Oh no! And it's basically oh, like. No. It's Robert De Niro is this grandpa who moves in. Dude, with I was his joking, son. by the way. Robert De and Niro. You were like, no, for real. Robert De Niro is a grandpa who like moves in with his son and takes over his grandson's old room, and like the grandson has to go to the attic, and the grandson and Robert De Niro have like a prank war to like who like winner takes the room, and it looks like such garbage. Someone needs to sit him down and be like, "Yo, dude, like." what's going on here? <laughs> like you've been, you, I, you, I've heard rumors that he lost a lot of money. It like that his wife has spent a lot of his money or his ex-wife now. Okay. That he's makes divorced. a lot of sense. Actually. Yes. I heard that his wife had put him into, I, I mean, this is all just like internet who rumors and shit. Knows, yeah. So who, who the fuck really knows? I have heard that his wife put him in a lot of debt and that's the reason that they're now getting divorced. But the internet in rumors, debt? Like he's or, negative or, or not that negative, would be so sad. but had spent so much that he basically has to be doing these shitty movies. Yeah, like, that's like Rob, um, Rob, Robin Williams at the end of his life. Apparently, yeah. um, fucked up, man. Let's bring this thing on home. Let's bring. This what do, what, do you, thing what on else? Home. What else about The Sopranos? I I don't know. Oh, we were talking. All right, because I got sidetracked by fucking Matthew Bella Aqua and his shitty acting. Um... <laughs> Um, Lobistics, Tone. <laughs> Lobistics, Tone. It's great that this episode. Like that fucking methamphetamine. The, it's great with this episode that kind of starts with um, these characters are damned, and like there's a spot for them in hell, and like Carmela seems this as like this is like your chance, like you've given a second chance to turn your life around like turn your life around like you've been warned there's a spot for you in hell change your life around stop doing fucked up things so that you like you can save yourself and you know some of the characters like kind of mull it over but then it ends in a murder it ends in them in them basically just rejecting that and i i feel like you know cuz tony believes he isn't going to hell but he does believe that at some point he's going to prison and i always view this as like a re- an acceptance of like look 
I know this. I know this doesn't end well for me. This life does not end well for me. But this is the price of admission because I wanted to be a part of this family. I wanted to be a part of the mob. I wanted to be part of this culture that my my father and my uncle helped started. And if the price of admission is that one day there's a knock on the door and the federal agents are going to take me to jail, then I will accept that. It reminds me of the um, the tapes that were made in the apartment above the Ra- Ravenite that uh, Gravano and um, Gotti are on in the old lady's apartment up there. And right. Gotti just basically says, like, you know, we're all going to the can. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like just, they knew it. They just... They knew it. That was yeah. the, that's that's the entry fee. Yeah. The entry fee. You want to live this life, all right? You have to give us the last twenty years of your life. Fuck that, man. That's no, too fuck that. <laughs> that's too big of a price. Yeah.